past three years have been extraordinary. And there may be this expectation that the global economy is simply going to revert to pre-COVID norms, that the business cycle will simply experience evolution rather than substantial change. We would assert, though, that we need to conceive of the idea that we may be on the cusp of big change, a new era. We are likely to find ourselves in a world with elevated geopolitical risk. Over and above these geopolitical, with resultant economic and financial market shocks, there's also developments surrounding technology. And then perhaps lastly, we've witnessed elevated levels of inflation in many parts of the world. And while many analysts got it wrong, initially suggesting that inflation would be temporary in its surge, it may be that inflation lingers at higher levels for longer. All in, these do therefore portend structural change, not just evolution of the business cycle. In just the last two months, the outlook for the global economy has improved markedly, and for a number of reasons. In at least 80% of countries, inflation is now falling. And commensurately, there's a belief that central banks are no more going to be tightening interest rates as viciously as they've done over the last year. Falling gas prices and ample supply of gas across Europe has helped to improve sentiment. And perhaps lastly, the end of zero COVID policy in China has lit a fire under select commodity prices. And there is this expectation that Chinese consumption is going to surge. So quite simply, global growth forecasts have suddenly been improved or elevated. Admittedly, it is the emerging markets that are going to provide the bulk of the thrust with some degree of deceleration on the part of developed markets this year. So somewhat of an asynchronous growth path with emerging markets being the substantial cyclical driver. All in reason to cheer, especially compared to a few months ago. The sub-Saharan African economy has recovered with somewhat of a lag relative to the developed world while the shadow of the pandemic fades. Having said that though, per capita income across the continent is likely to surpass pre-pandemic norms. But performance across the continent will be varied. The non-resource dependent economies, especially those on the eastern shelf of Africa, will outperform. So nations such as Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and even Ethiopia are likely to grow at 5% or better. Mozambique, probably around 4.5%, especially as gas exports continue to take flight. The slower performing economies, relatively speaking, will be on the western shores of the continent, with Nigeria probably mustering around 3.3%, and Angola slightly better than 2%. Both these economies have been bedeviled by falling levels of oil production and oil exports for several years now that has kind of locked these two economies into a low single digit performance band. Sub-Saharan Africa this year will likely grow at around 4% from approximately 3.7% last year. And over the medium term, will likely cling to around 4% economic growth. This is not to say that the continent is without risks. High levels of inflation and elevated levels of debt will distinguish some of the better performing economies from those that struggle. In 2023, South Africa's political cycle will likely find resonance with ESCOM's path. In other words, in the aftermath of the NC's elective conference in December and President Ramaphosa's stronger mandate, great expectations rest upon his shoulders. There is a view that he can act in a more emboldened fashion across a number of areas, foremost with respect to ESCOM. And to the extent that there is a believable path with regard to ESCOM being able to deliver more secure energy, even if incrementally so, during the course of 2023. If, however, ESCOM continues to fail, it is likely to provide a hammer blow to the ANC in next year's election. 
Favorably, though, there are a number of cyclical macroeconomic forces for 2023. Household spending is likely to be a bedrock element, with households aided by falling inflation. Also, the credit markets remain important for fueling economic growth, and government social safety net is a fairly significant underpin. Falling inflation will probably imply that the South African Reserve Bank is nearing the top of its interest rate tightening cycle. In fact, it may have concluded its cycle with the recent quarter point rate hike. With respect to the RAND, we believe that it is marginally undervalued. And in that respect, the scope for the RAND to appreciate during the course of the year is plausible. Several forces will drive this, including the elevation in commodity prices, a preference by international investors for South African assets, given the relative cheapness, especially of financial market assets, and the idea that during the course of 2023, the dollar is likely to depreciate in value, therefore fostering default rand appreciation. We anticipate 16 rand 40 as an average for the course of this year or thereabouts. So all in, at least South Africa can look forward to a business cycle, while certainly not lively, but generating growth in the vicinity of around 1.5% this year, with acceleration expected in 2024.